This year we celebrate 100 years since the discovery of beneficial nematodes by Dr. Steiner. In this short documentary series we discover the world and impact of these small natural helpers. Welcome to the fascinating world of the microscopic roundworms that changed agriculture. Anton Krauss was a research assistant at the Forestry University in Germany. He encountered a massive outbreak of a webworm on Norway spruces during an excursion to a forest in the Egg Mountains. He took samples and found several wasps that parasitized this pest. Krauss found a nymph infected by a nematode and sent it to Gotthold Steiner, a renowned nematologist from Switzerland. Steiner investigated the material received from Krauss and discovered the first entomopathogenic nematode, which he named Aplatana Krause, in honor of Krauss. At that time, in the 1920s, it was considered no more than a curiosity. It was not until the 1950s that nematodes received increasing interest among scientists who wanted to explore their potential. So we know the first entomopathogenic nematode, which is now called Steiner Nema Krause, was described in the 1920s. The biocontrol potential of these nematodes, however, was first investigated by Glazer and his colleagues. They researched how an other species, Steiner Nema glaseri, also identified by Dr. Steiner, could control a population of Japanese beetles that had invaded New Jersey in the 50s. After its use against the Japanese beetle, it ceased to be of interest and all cultures were lost. It was not until Weiser in 1955 described a European population of Steiner Nema carpocapsae found in codling moth larvae that serious studies began. In the 60s and 70s, these studies led to the first entomopathogenic nematodes production for field testing. Entomopathogenic nematodes, particularly the genera that are exploited today for biological control, are actually ubiquitous. They live in many different types of soils. In any country of the world that you can think of, you make a hole and you find entomopathogenic nematodes of the genera that we use today for biological control. They can control pests across all different types of crops, indoors, outdoors, in pots, in the soil, under very different climatic conditions. My name is Roxina Soler. I'm agronomist on my basic. About 10 years ago, I moved from academia to, to Copert to do research in business. In a nutshell, our department is responsible to generate the knowledge about our biological solutions. Biological control in agriculture, if you think um, in pest control by using uh, natural enemies, insect parasitoids and uh, mites uh, overall, you can think of a date of 50 plus years. If you think on control of other threats for the crops, like diseases, and then you need other players to control them, like microbes, then we come closer and closer to the current times. Compared to natural enemies, microbials are the, the, the youngest sister or, or brother of it. It's really lately that their importance is being truly understood and their potential is being uh, uncovered. In the agricultural setting, uh, nematodes are these soft body, non-segmented worms that live in the soil. Some of them feed on plants. Those are called plant. Uh, parasitic nematodes, plant pathogenic nematodes, and some of them actually lives on insects, and those are called entomopathogenic nematodes. When we say entomopathogenic nematodes, that word means that these are uh, organisms that parasitize, that, that lives inside the body of insects. The latter are the groups that are beneficial for agriculture that can be exploited to control different uh, pests that uh, uh, feeds in the roots of many, many crops. The discovery of endomopathogenic nematodes 100 years ago have a major impact, major positive impact on crop protection. The control of pests below the ground is particularly challenging. There aren't, par there aren't many options, there aren't many biological solutions that can thrive in the soil and control pests. Actually, entomopathogenic nematodes are the best player we have today to go under the ground and to control insects that feed on the roots of actually any crop 
uh, that you can think of. So how exactly does it work? Entomopathogenic nematodes enter the pest insect through any body opening, such as the respiratory holes. Once inside, they make their way to the substance that fills the body cavity. When the nematode is inside the insect, it releases a special cocktail. A part of this mixture is a specific symbiotic bacterium. The other part contains proteins that help to break down the host's immune system, killing the insect rapidly, within hours to a couple of days. The key to the nematode's success, however, is the bacteria. Each species of entomopathogenic nematode carries its own specialized symbiotic bacteria that can only survive in the nematode or the host insect's body. The Steiner nema nematodes produce bacteria that multiply in the caterpillar and start producing enzymes. The enzymes break down the host tissue and turn it into a nutritious soup that the nematodes then eat. When sensing this nutrient-rich environment, the nematodes develop into adults of both sexes. After mating, eggs are produced, and a new generation of nematodes hatch. Where the chances lie with entomopathogenic nematodes? Well, today we are only seeing the tip of the iceberg. They are being used, but only to control a limited number of pests in very specific regions, mainly below the ground. So definitely we can expand in terms of number of species that we could reach, number of pests that we can reach below the ground, and certainly the, the above ground domain that is completely unexploited today is really just, just starting. In the next episode, we talk about a whole other side of the nematode coin, production, because producing nematodes is anything but easy. Still, somehow we've managed well. The first start was only about 50 milliliters. Then we transferred that to a 10 liter uh, fermenter. And then we changed to a 100 liter. Uh, from the 100, we went to 200, 400, and then we gave, ended up with a, with a gin vessel. And that was a couple of thousands. And for us, that was a major breakthrough. That was the start of everything.